it's Miss Kulkani again. In this video, we are going to go one more step higher in stoichiometry calculation. So, just to remind you again, this is our mole roadmap when we have to go through mole with all the conversions. Mole is the heart uh, or the hub and then particles and mass both have these converting factors. Okay. Now we are going to go from grams to moles to particles to atoms and could be more. So let's see what it means. The for question number one which we have here is how many carbon atoms are there in 16.0 grams of glucose? We have to go to carbon number atoms and this is glucose, this is a molecule. Okay. So one molecule of glucose contains how many? Six atoms of carbon. Keep that in mind. And now let's get our roadmap first. Given to us is mass in grams, so it's grams. Remember from grams we are going this way. So from grams we go to moles. From moles we go to particles. Just keep in mind the particles for this particular substance will be actually molecules and from molecules we are going to go to atoms of carbon. So let's put all that in our grid. That's grams, moles, that's particles and that's atoms of carbon. Okay, given to us is 16.0 gram and now already you know gram should come here, mole should be diagonally across and particles should be diagonally across from here. The ratio with moles and grams means it is molar mass and molar mass for glucose is 180.1 gram. This is a ratio between moles and particles. So we are going to use that magic number. One mole is equal to 6.022 10 to the 23rd. And when it goes to the atoms and particles, remember the particles here are molecules of glucose. So one molecule of glucose is equal to six atoms of carbon. We are going to use that same coefficient which we got one and six over here. So one particle or one molecule equals to six atoms of carbon. Canceling the units, common units, we end up having final answer as atoms of carbon and make sure you are multiplying all the things in denominator and dividing by all the things which we got in denominator. So the final answer which I got here is 3.21 times 10 to the 23rd and these are atoms of carbon. Alright, let's go to the next one. In this one, we have the sample of aluminum sulphide. Aluminum sulfide is AlSO3, that's for aluminum, so it will be Al2 and SO3 will be 3. Alrighty, what we have is atoms of aluminum are given here and from there we need to go to the mass or gram. Now again, keep in mind this is a molecule, so in one molecule of aluminum sulfite. How many aluminum atoms we have? We get two atoms of aluminum. So let's get the road map and when we start road map, think about that. Now these atoms is our beginning point. So I start with atoms of aluminum. From there we are actually going to molecules or which we call as particles and now it's simple. 
from particles we go to moles and from moles we go to grams. So what do we have here? Alright, this is 4.55 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what we have. The atoms divided by the atom. Now here it will be atom and it will be here particles or it will be molecule. So keep in mind one molecule is equal to two atoms of aluminum. So I'm going to put two here and this is going to be one. Beyond that it's simple. It's moles and grams and you know the drill. So it's one mole and we get Avogadro's number, magic number there. It's one mole and now here it will be the molar mass which is 294.15 okay and this is going to be of course atoms for aluminum so atoms are gone particles are molecules are gone and moles are gone we end up your answer in grams so multiply everything which we have in numerator divide by denominator and the final answer when we round up to 111 grams of Al2SO3 and that is 3 because it's aluminum sulfite. Also keep one more thing in mind, the significant figures. Sig fix for this number 4.55 are 3. So we need to make sure your final answer is also rounded to the correct sig fix. Alright. So, I hope you are ready for all the calculations with stoichiometry now. I'll see you next time. Bye.